Hello and welcome. You are watching the Journal of the 43rd ASEAN Summit and its related summit taking place here in the capital of Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm Rahmat Idris. And I'm Luisa Kusnandar. This is the 43rd ASEAN Summit. And today at our 43rd ASEAN Summit Special Dialogue by TVRI World, we are joined by Andrew Mantong, researcher of the CSIS right here. Welcome, Mr. Andrew. Thank you and so much. today we will be discussing about the results of the 43rd ASEAN Summit as well as related summits. Sure. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. And Thank let's start the show. Yeah. Mm. This is the last day. Mas Andrew, lots to unpack, <laughs> lots to expect. We're going to be deep in conversations with you. In the meantime, we have uh, a couple of news to uh, deliver now. Now, let's go on to the first one today. Australia and Japan counterparts said they would deepen cooperation with ASEAN in a bid to enhance security and stability in Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, Chinese Premier Li Qiang told leaders of ASEAN that their cooperation will be as firm as ever and able to press ahead against all odds. And from the ASEAN-US summit, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris said that Indonesia has become the center for Indo-Pacific cooperation. Take a look at this next report. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Lebanese and his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida were speaking at the ASEAN Indo-Pacific Forum, an event held on the sidelines of the 43rd ASEAN Summit in Jakarta, Indonesia. Prime Minister Albanese said ASEAN and Australia will build prosperity, stability, sovereignty and environmental commitments together. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Kishida said Japan will strengthen maritime law enforcement by providing patrol vessels and training to Coast Guard agencies and maritime police. Kishida also highlighted his support for ASEAN, adding that the nation will cooperate with the bloc to ensure other nations abide by the principles of the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific framework. Chinese Prime Minister Li Qiang made the comment after China released a Tandash Line map last week, delineating what it considers its waters that appear to expand its claims in the South China Sea. China wants to work with Indonesia to expand cooperation in various areas, including green energy, the digital economy, biomedicine, and artificial intelligence. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol says South Korea and ASEAN must enhance their cooperation as North Korea's increasing missile provocations and nuclear threats pose a direct and existential threat to ASEAN member states as well. At the ASEAN-US summit, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, representing for President Biden, congratulated Indonesia on its leadership in ASEAN. She conveyed that ASEAN has become the center of cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region. Trade between the two parties has created jobs for more than 60,000 people in America. America also provides support to resolve conflicts occurring in Myanmar. Well, there you have you have it. We just seen a little bit of a summary of what's been happening at the 43rd ASEAN Summit. And here with us is Mr. Andrew Montong from Researchers of CSIS. Now, first of all, the 43rd ASEAN Summit and also the related summit is already near the completion now. So does everything meet the expectation that we have so far and in what way? Well, it depends on the, you know, sort of uh, assumptions of your questions. Mm -hmm. As chair, I think Indonesia has done very tremendous jobs in making sure that every agenda is being achieved and all the logistics has been settled down and the meeting just run, uh, just run as smooth as, as possible That, and even extravagant, if we can refer to yeah. the last night uh, dinner. Uh, but the impact of the results is we are still waiting for some uh, details. Especially uh, one of the most important deliverables for, from the summit is the so-called uh, Concord 4. And we are still waiting whether the Concord would eventually give 
the new form of the ASEAN community, especially after 2045, Five, yeah. and whether there would be some changes in the way ASEAN work on a daily basis, given the changes that we are witnessing now with regards to geopolitical uh, rivalry be be between US and uh, China, and there are some uh, pressing regional flashpoints issues, including Myanmar in, in, in this region. Mm. Based on your observation, Mr. Andrew, what has been a concrete result that mm. we have achieved so far in terms of strategic partnerships with all these countries? What has been the most successful result so far? One of the most concrete results from this summit is the sort of implementation of ASEAN on local Indo-Pacific. I think government already claimed that there have been some projects mm. that was informed by the existence of the document, which uh, you know signed uh, years ago and uh, wait, was waiting for years to be well implemented. Mm -hmm. So, if we can refer any concrete uh, uh, benefits of the of the current summit, is uh, we can refer is that we can refer to the ASEAN outlook on the Pacific. Mm -hmm. But whether this project would be sufficient enough to uh, address uh, the mission that Indonesian government is trying to emphasize through launching the theme of ASEAN Matters Epicentrum of Growth, we are still waiting to see. Because I think one of the biggest challenges of this summit is that Indonesian government has prepared so many details, mm. so many agendas of cooperation, but just weeks before the summit, there was a big debate about a uh, Chinese incident with Vietnam and Philippines yeah. with regards to their you know, the uh, new water map. cannon yeah. actions. And water uh, cannon, and, yeah. In, in, in South China Sea, that uh, quite you know sh uh, shows to to ASEAN that regardless of how much technical cooperation we are going to initiate, the question of the dominance of the uh, narrative of superpower competition will still loom, uh, loom large in this uh, region. Mm. So that's the challenge that you know still uh, uh, up for any uh, ASEAN member countries to deal with. Yeah, mm. well, it's no surprise of its own, Mr. Andrew, because uh, for the first part of the ASEAN and partner meeting yesterday, the initial one was the ASEAN plus China, where the premier of Chi uh, China, uh, Li Qiang, over and over again says uh, the Chinese supports towards upholding security, stability, and peace in mm. the region, while as a matter of fact, in South China Sea, with some of these opposing claimants of the new map, things has not Things have not been so. So why do you think that we have all these words from the leaders not resonating with, with actually what's happening on the ground? Mm. Well, uh, it's because the way of uh, the usual modus of operandi of ASEAN, which always trying to make some distance from the real uh, problem of security. Avoiding we have so many issue. doctrines of mm. non-interference, we have so many doctrines about making a decision through consensus. And you know, uh, it's not a secret anymore that there have been some division within ASEAN member states over their uh, opinion. For example, uh, this year there was ideas floating around about having joint naval exercise in South China Sea. But to do, due to this agreement between uh, ASEAN member states, the Indonesian government has to change the location mm. away from South uh, China Sea, from Nat or North Natuna Sea. And uh, it proves that the, it, we have uh, our internal challenges. Mm. So what the best that ASEAN can achieve in this very short summit is to come up at the lowest uh, common ground, the lowest level of hanging fruits. So that's why... Uh, if the question is why it doesn't really resonate, mm. why it doesn't up uh, going up to the expectation that ASEAN can ha can say something boldly about South China Sea issues, is because of this um, uh, consensus mechanism uh, uh, framework that ASEAN has adopted so far, and there are huge division between uh, uh, ASEAN member states. Mm. Well, the South China Sea as well as the Fukushima nuclear waste has been a sensitive matter throughout this ASEAN yeah. summit and it has been avoided. So mm. would you say that this was not as expected as it is this expected as it should be? Or well, do you think it should fair, have been have to, uh, discussed first? Yeah, I have to bring back again the idea of ASEAN. ASEAN mm. was never meant to be that way. So that was not the, the, re the first reason why ASEAN was established. 
So dealing with political security issues, given the fact that we are also abiding so much to the principle of non-interference, of consensus, I think it's going to be hard for ASEAN to make a breakthrough on these particular sensitive issues. So that's why I think for Indonesian government, the strategy is to put aside these differences and focus more on the possible areas of cooperation. That has mm. been the sort of re-emphasizing uh, attempt by the government to say that this is uh, ASEAN, this is why ASEAN matters, and why ASEAN should, uh, should uh, maintain the epicentrum of growth. The problem is, can we use and rely on the same and usual uh, habits of cooperation? Can we rely on the usual uh, uh, modes of operandus, if we can say that, mm. to deal with ex, uh, ex, uh, increasingly pressing challenges that is coming from these uh, issues like, for example, South China Sea or even Taiwan, uh, for that matters. Mm. Right. Uh, Andrew, one of the more significant achievements that have been made throughout the summit was the uh, common ground found on mm -hmm. ASEAN Concord 4. Walk us through some of the fundamentals within the concrete that can truly inside a change within the body of ASEAN. I, 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 I must refer back to my previous comments. Mm -hmm. So that's the strategy of the Indonesian government to say, uh, to respond to the, the growing challenges of you know, geopolitical uh, competition and the rest, the, the way that the, the, the ASEAN and Indonesian government respond is to say that ASEAN should be kept as epicentrum of growth. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I think the title of the, the Concord 4 is uh, saying that ASEAN matters, epicentrum of growth. There are some interesting notes that I can take from the launching of the, uh, the Concord 4. First, it's, a, it's a really a breakthrough of a tradition because usually we name Concord after Bali. Bali mm. Concord 1, Bali yeah. Concord 2, and Bali yeah. Concord 3. And now we just say that this is ASEAN Concord. Just because, uh, you know, we, we, we have the summit not yeah. held in it's Bali, not but, but in Jakarta. One. <laughs> but uh, the, the more, more interesting question with that is whether with such a break, breaking through from the tradition, it will also come with some sort of breakthrough measures on the way how ASEAN uh, works. From what I can get from the, uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the document so far, I uh, would say that probably we cannot expect too much mm. that ASEAN can be changed, like for example, whether consensus decision making can be changed eventually. But we hope that there would be some uh, innovation, quote unquote, with regards to the way ASEAN would expedite decision making process. Mm. Because it has been acknowledged by leaders since the Labuan Bajo Summit, and leaders has been convinced that due to Myanmar crisis, there was something wrong with ASEAN, that ASEAN was too slow in responding to the crisis to Myanmar and ASEAN therefore was not really able to catch up with the, 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 the time sensitive opportunities mm. that, uh, that the, the, the crisis probably unfolded to us from the very beginning. But this innovation is somewhat, I think, going on at the, uh, at, at the last uh, political level. It's more at the technical level, it's probably more related to, to how, for example, uh, you know, representative in ASEAN works, how bureaucratic uh, chain in ASEAN are being ameliorated with regards to time sensitive issues and how ASEAN is going to be expanded from ASEAN Secretariat to ASEAN headquarters. Mm. So these are some sort of incremental changes that we can expect from the Bali Concord. Fourth, it's going to be hard again, you know, I think for the Indonesian government to even go further than that, given the structural constraints that we are experiencing in, 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 in the region, the best thing that we can expect if we want to change ASEAN is to revise the charter. Mm -hmm. this, is non, uh, this, is not, this is not a question anymore. But I don't think that the Indonesian government from the very beginning liked the idea of revising the charter. So here we are. The mm -hmm. Bali Concord 4 is the sort of negotiation of changing ASEAN but not wanting to change the ASEAN Charter. Mm. Mm. It's a very tricky situation right there. Yes. <laughs> now, let's talk about the countries that we are um, form strategic partnership with. One of them is Japan, when uh, Japan has said that we are going beyond ceremonial mm -hmm. uh, formalities as well as small talks to a tangible, concrete cooperation. Mm -hmm. How do you think uh, we and Japan can work together in the future. What have we achieved through this ASEAN summit with Japan? I think with regards to Japan's uh, role in, in the region, Japan is one of the uh, most important middle power mm. with so many track records in ASEAN. 
I think from the very beginning, Japan's role in ASEAN has been instrumental, for example, in establishing the ASEAN Plus 3, ASEAN as regional forum, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Even at track two level, Japan's role has been instrumental in, for example, establishing a network uh, called AREA, mm. which is uh, the most proponent of the ASEAN Blue Economy Framework. And their logo is, uh, is there on the ASEAN output, uh, uh, one of the deliverables of the mm -hmm. summit. So uh, that's why I think with that particular track records, Japan is trying to sort of speed up the games, not doing the usual uh, forums and so on and so forth, and they are more focusing on something with a clear key performance indicators. So they want deliverables. Mm. They want monitoring and evaluation and so on and so forth, which I think for ASEAN is also another reason to change the way the organization work. So ASEAN has been good in, you know, exploring new areas of cooperation and so on and so forth. Mm. We have so many declarations and for example on electronic vehicle, on uh, early childhood education and so on and so forth. But the problem with ASEAN is always this. You have declaration, how to translate declaration into the actual plan of action and how plan of action is going to be translated into the actual work plan. And by the end of the day, after you have work plan, how are you going to evaluate? and monitor the progress of achievement of the work plan. Taking, for example, one of the most important achievement that probably Indonesian leadership has done in ASEAN is on uh, countering radicalization and violent extremism. Mm. We have come to the level of work plan and the report only says that after four years, we only achieve 30% of all activities listed in the work plan. One of the most uh, important reason is about the, 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 the event of COVID-19, which you know, put a halt to everything. Mm. Yeah, put yeah. a halt to everything. Yeah. But after COVID-19, this cannot be res uh, this cannot be excuse anymore. So I think that's why government, uh, the, the Japan government, will always push these ideas of having MONEF, having KPI, having something creed. Otherwise, I think they are dealing with the reason why their uh, taxpayers' money goes to ASEAN mm. when they also have their internal uh, challenges in Japan. Exactly. Wow. We need the result, a concrete result, yeah. not just making all these declarations and work plans sure. without any follow through. That's mm. right, uh, Louis said. It's not just about meeting, 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 but yes. then result, results, <laughs> result. On that note, uh, Mas Andrew, you mentioned briefly that it is indeed that ASEAN is a consensus-based uh, mechanism institution. That is yes. something that has become an old tradition of, uh, of ASEAN up until now. But the question is, all of the consensus that have been reached so far, they're not exactly legally binding is it that have led to the you know non-realistic uh, uh, action plans that have been uh, formulated on the table of discussion well what actually needs to be we, we do have a potentials to be legally binding if not changing the uh, the way ASEAN work for mm -hmm. example on uh, under security political security uh, 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 areas I can mention at least two areas of cooperation, which is one on the countering violent extremism and ra radicalism, yeah. counter-terrorism, yeah. and the other one is Trans trafficking in trafficking Transnational crimes. There are right. already yeah. convention, which, mm. is, which should be legally binding. Okay. So uh, the problem is with something about legally binding, it is legally binding, but another problem is how it's going to be Impl the way of implementation. Yeah, being how ratified you, yes. by the country as well. Mm. How, how would you ensure compliance how would you, would you ensure that this particular convention and uh, uh, you know whatever uh, uh, agreement that ASEAN has achieved would be followed up by concrete implementation? Yeah. The, 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 the unresolved issues with regards to ASEAN institutional design is always about com, uh, 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 compliance. It's yeah. always about you know how after we agreed on something we follow through after that. Yeah. So that remains a question yeah. for ASEAN. Mm. And there is no sanctions if it's not followed through, mm. if there's no implementation. Yes. So you can, you can choose to do it, but if not, there's nothing we can do mm. to make yeah. you do it, to make you go by the... Yes. And that's why uh, with that regards to, you know, easiest areas of cooperation, mm. e economics, if we assume that economics is not influenced by security, and some socio-cultural issues. Uh, the problem would not be so high if there was no crisis. Right. For example, if you agreed on something about health and then you don't, you, you, you don't follow up with compliance, it's okay. But at the end of the day, you know, a couple, couple, couple years ago, we have COVID-19. Mm. Then we do really have something robust to speed up the sort of 
uh, cooperation with us and come up with effective hmm. way of handling COVID-19 together as a region. That was a, a, a last stories. But I think most, uh, one of the most important pressing issues with regards to this particularly uh, uh, modes of uh, operandi of ASEAN is with regards to South China Sea and Code of Conduct. How can you make a product that would touch upon most pressing security issues in the region and how are you going to make <coughs> sure that that particular product is effective enough yeah. that people will follow and abide to that yeah. particular uh, uh, product of ASEAN? This remains a question. So that's why I think if we cannot really handle the situations <coughs> with a very careful ways of doing things, countries, for example, like Philippines, in, 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 in the next year probably would be impatient about ASEAN. That code of conduct is too slow, that yeah. they are having incidents on daily basis with China, yeah. and they have nothing to do anymore except going closer to the United States. So this mm -hmm. is the thing that probably Indonesian government or some other government in, in ASEAN member states also doesn't want. So we need to do something. So that's why I think one of the most important deliverables for ASEAN summit this year is Concord 4 is the visions of 2045 because these two deliverables deal directly with the way ASEAN work but we are still waiting for further details hmm. about these results we have the plan but we need the details and the, the, some the result people, but you know some yeah. pessimists would say that yeah if you don't change the ASEAN charter nothing much about room of maneuver that ASEAN hmm. can utilize to change itself hmm. Let's see about that. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Mr. Andrew, we mentioned about Japan just now. Right. Another country that actually has a big hit at the ASEAN summit this year is, also, of course, Korea. Yes. Korea has been um, growing at such a fast, rapid rate in terms of technology, sure. pop and culture. What does Korea has to play in a role um, in relation with our economy at the moment? Well, uh, Korea is a very interesting case mm. because uh, there were uh, uh, there was changes in their government. The previous government has come up with a very sort of breakthrough uh, approach to ASEAN because they published the new sovereign policy document, mm. which not followed by the current government. Instead, yeah. the current government, the President Yoon administration, they adopted the so-called Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy. With that note, I think it's a rather different approach taken by the previous government, and they would uh, they, they become closer to their uh, U.S. counterparts mm. in using Indo-Pacific as uh, operational terms in their foreign policy. But uh, it doesn't really change the way they approach this region because at the same time they also publish a document called Korea ASEAN Solidarity Initiatives. So there are some sort of continuations of the uh, previous administration to. To, to, to the current administration. Uh, Korea has been impressive with regards to their document because the essence of the previous documents is really about making ASEAN as a potential uh, destination of investment, potential market, and potential partners of dealing with pressing uh, security issues for Korea. Mm. For that matter, the track record so far, Korea has done such a tremendous job mm. in economic field but we are still waiting for their more expansive role on security. So uh, they are still homework from the Korean side to live up to the, their profile and their growing reputation as middle power in this region mm. by taking up more uh, bold uh, security approaches to, to the region. We are still waiting whether the, the, the last uh, summit can be translated into more uh, security role of Korea. Mm, well, right. there's still so much to talk about. I'm still yeah. so excited and I want to know more about how Korea as a country works and how we can follow, what we can follow from them, as well as the talks about green economy and also EV. But we need to take a break now. Mm, that's right. <laughs> so stay with us on TVRI World. We'll be right back very soon.
Welcome back. You're still watching the Journal of the 43rd ASEAN Summit and its related summits here in Jakarta, Indonesia. We have more news reports coming up next. And next, we will fast forward to talk about the ASEAN chairmanship in 2026. The retreat session of the ASEAN Summit on Tuesday concluded with a decision to name the Philippines as the 2026 chair of ASEAN by passing Myanmar, which is currently still under control of the military junta. As the Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ratno Marsudi, suggested that ASEAN would continue to be committed to providing assistance to Myanmar, ASEAN leaders have decided that the ASEAN chairmanship in 2026 will be held by the Philippines. Myanmar, which is supposed to hold the chairmanship post in 2026, has been absent from the ASEAN ministerial meeting and the ASEAN summit in Jakarta, as well as ASEAN side events. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. says his country is ready to chair ASEAN in 2026, replacing Myanmar. Next year's ASEAN chairmanship will be held by Lao, followed by Malaysia in 2025 and the Philippines in 2026. Right, Master Andrew, do you think that our leaders at the summit table have made the right decision to uh, hand over the chairmanship of uh, uh, ASEAN in 2026 to uh, the Philippines in lieu of Myanmar, they haven't been abiding by the five PCs. Well, I support the decision because mm. we cannot have Myanmar to chair ASEAN in 2026. Six. Six. Correct. You know, I'm very pessimistic the situation in Myanmar would be resolved anytime soon. In, let's say, one year, so they have one year, another one year to uh, prepare for their championship in ASEAN. Uh -huh. Not to mention there have, there have been some uh, serious violations against uh, principles mentioned in ASEAN Charter yeah. that the current military junta in Myanmar has done uh, to the people of to Myanmar. People. Yeah. So I think it is actually a good decision and there are also some good uh, uh, decision with regards to continuation of ASEAN approach to Myanmar, like for exa example invoking the mechanism of ASEAN Troika to ensure that there would be some continuities of the approach taken by the current chair, which is Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So invoking uh, the mechanism of Troika will place Indonesia with Laos and uh, Malaysia yeah. Yeah. to collectively deal with uh, how ASEAN approach the Myanmar situations. But one of the most important regret that I have with regards to the uh, document of the uh, you know uh, leaders agreement on, on on the reviewing the five point consensus is they say something about authorities authority in Myanmar mm. so this is i think probably i don't know whether it is a slip of the tongue that the can you explain more on that saying we, we should not allow, acknowledge military power mm. as authority uh, uh, as because authority in mm. Myanmar right you know uh, uh, the 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 essence of saying something as authority is to assume that there are some foundations of legitimacy mm. so how can you say someone have authority because he has been appointed as and designated as an official entity and people agree to that the problem with the status of military uh, junta in mm. Myanmar, they just took their uh, power mm. from the civilian government and they de facto ruling the entire uh, uh, Myanmar mm. as the military junta. So this is something that I think ASEAN has to put distance from, 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 from the reality in Myanmar. Why don't just say it as a military junta? or Tatmada or something like that instead of saying authority in in in, in Myanmar so mm. that's one of the regret that i have from that particular document issued by leaders yesterday mm. how do you think the other asean countries could actually assist what's going on in Myanmar well uh, it's not a secret anymore that mm. the Myanmar crisis has exposed there are some clear differences in within asean member states mm. there are countries that would like to prefer just stability in Myanmar. So whatever the cost, as long as you have the stability, including you know, working with the military government, 
they would prefer that. But there are countries that would be more explicit in referring to the principles of democracy and human rights and saying that the, the, the power ruling of the military junta in Myanmar is not acceptable. So therefore, they are not authority in that sense. Uh, but there are also countries in the middle. You know, uh, they don't know what to do and they don't know how to best approach mm. the Myanmar issues. The latest, uh, 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 you know, the, there have been some criticism already among scholars, among experts, among ex-officials about the result of the document, saying that it just ensured the ASEAN comfortability in dealing with Myanmar issues, but it's not really ensuring how would ASEAN approach translate to the actual impact on the ground. Exactly. So there mm. are some criticism with mm. that. My position is that, that was, that's the best that ASEAN mm. can do. And my reaction to that criticism is depends on where you're coming from. If you're coming from the US, why don't you become mm. bolder, mm. right? If you're coming from India, for example, why don't you stopping, for example, uh, supporting mm. uh, some particular forces in India that probably closer to your border? Mm. So that would be my response to, to, to them because ASEAN certainly has some limitations in dealing with these issues. The next homework that ASEAN should do after uh, forming Troika and after, uh, you know, uh, sort of banning mm. Myanmar from mm. becoming chair in 2026 is to come up with a longer, longer term. That particular longer term should also be complemented with the way how ASEAN work with great powers. How ASEAN should work with India, how ASEAN should work with China, and how ASEAN should work from proponents of democratic voices, for example, South Korea, Japan, and the US, to, uh, to have a concerted efforts. But most importantly, for Indonesian government after this is, how are you going to work with Thailand? Mm. Because you know, the last summit in Labuan, uh, Labuan Bajo and then by the, the foreign ministerial meeting was sort of disrupted by Thailand's own approach to Myanmar. Yeah. So they, they go directly to military junta, they met the, uh, the, the, the democratic leader Aung San Suu Kyi, mm. and you know, uh, if this is not going to be concerted, how are we going to make a credible voices to military junta that ASEAN should be taken seriously, that mm. ASEAN is not divided, that we keep thinking about you and we keep saying and discussing, talking about you, and you really listen, you really have to listen to us at wow. the end of the day. Well, it's really just not uh, Thailand only, uh, uh, Mas Andrew, because uh, we know that uh, on the sidelines of Indonesia's chairmanship, uh, Thailand met with military hunter of Myanmar, but mm -hmm. also China is, is, had sure. conducted the same thing. The premier met up with the military hunter, blatantly expressing their support to Myanmar, and in another way, Singapore too, although uh, Lee Sien Long has expressed their, his uh, uh, disagreements towards the slow actions of ASEAN, but some of the companies on behalf of China are situated in Singapore and also fully backing Myanmar in that sense. And India, in a way, has also made it some uh, progress in talks with uh, Myanmar, meaning mm -hmm. that these countries have significant investments mm -hmm. in Myanmar and any disruptions domestically in Myanmar would also probably directly impacting their economical relationships. Would that in a way, in your perspective, hinders our efforts as ASEAN in uh, collectivity to resolve uh, the civil strife in that country? Well, it depends on the, on the sort of vision that uh, countries like Indonesia have towards Myanmar. So if, you, if, you're referring, if you're referring to these particular examples, mm. my question to the Indonesian government as well as other democratic voices both in ASEAN and outside ASEAN is, are you going to be ready mm. with a clear possibility, with a very potential resolve of this uh, Myanmar crisis that democracy will lose at the end of the day? Mm. Are you yeah. ready for that? Yeah. Is it? true according to the principle of ASEAN Charter. So the thing that we are worried about now is that there, there are some, uh, you know, s uh, symptoms toward normalizations of the ruling of the Myanmar junta. So that's why I'm really afraid when ASEAN use the term of authority in Myanmar, is it something mm. closer to the sort of normalizations of of, of Myanmar. Meanwhile, I think Indonesia is also having problem of translating mm. the result of quiet diplomacy into inclusive dialogue. Mm. 
So the best thing that we can do for now is, let's say, we are going to have election in Myanmar. But before election, we should have an inclusive dialogue first to make sure that election is not only a rubber stamp yeah, that mechanism. Yeah, that is fair. For that is truly a democratic <laughs> election. True, true. <laughs> so that, that's the thing that we should do for now. And for that, I think the key question for the Indonesian government after making sure that there are concerted efforts at the regional level is to channel these efforts to address the big elephant of, uh, uh, in the room. Mm. <laughs> How are you going to pressure the military junta to stop killing and restrain and then eventually come to the negotiation table? And more importantly, allow AHA centers to be built, the yeah. ASEAN Humanitarian Assistance. Mm. It's been attacked. I mean, these aids coming in for the people by the yes. military junta. So that alone expressed the disregard and disrespect towards ASEAN efforts, not to the military, but to the people mm. where it really matters, Mas Andrew. True. And also there are some, uh, that part is if you said that the authoritarian side of the story, right? Mm. And then also at the same time, Indonesia should also work with the democratic side of the story, which is how are you going to approach uh, 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 actors like, for example, uh, People Democratic Forces, mm. the NUGs and, and, so, and so on and so forth. And how are you going to garner support from democratic countries like, uh, you know, um, uh, Malaysia, US, South Korea, Japan, to... Uh, to uh, persuade the democratic forces in Myanmar to also come to the negotiation table. Mm. Mm. Because what happened uh, on the ground is there are an impossible situation, there are impasse situation. No one would come to the negotiation table, no one would come to the dialogue mm. because the other, the, the, the other party would label them as terrorists. Right. That's, that's not a room for dialogue. Yes. So you have to really uh, come and uh, de deal with the situation to sort of loosen up the, the, the position of each side and saying that, okay, you cannot have a long solution if you entirely debunk all the state institutions. Mm. I think Indonesia doesn't believe that. Indonesia doesn't believe, for example, in Iraq war because what Iraq war do for Iraq people is to destroy all the mm. military institutions, all the political symbols and so on and so forth. We don't want to happen in Myanmar. But at the same time, we also are democratic countries. So the best thing, and we also uh, uh, lead ASEAN to come up with the uh, product of Bali Concord 3, even ASEAN Charter, that clearly mentioned that we should respect hmm. democracy. So we should combine these approaches by combining our efforts at regional level with uh, efforts that can be done by great powers. Wow, that is a whole in-depth <laughs> Uh, uh, dialogue we have yeah. about the condition situation that is going on in Myanmar at yeah. the moment. Open mm -hmm. up a whole new horizons for <laughs> us to read into mm. this Myanmar issue, right, Luisa? In the meantime, we'll take another short break now. Uh, we have more exciting dialogues and more reports coming your way in the journal, so don't go anywhere. As a total GDP. Hey there, you're still watching the Journal of the 43rd ASEAN Summits and its related summits here in Jakarta with me, Rahmat Idris, and my partner, Luisa Kusnanda. That's right, and let's continue talking about the China ASEAN cooperation. The Chinese Prime Minister Li Chiang says China and ASEAN have taken concrete actions in efforts to maintain regional stability amidst various challenges. Addressing the 26th ASEAN-China Summit held in Jakarta, Chinese Prime Minister Li Xiang said the China-ASEAN cooperation must remain strong and continue to move forward despite facing many challenges. Li Xiang said joint efforts between China and ASEAN are reflected in four areas. First, the commitment to treat each other sincerely and with mutual trust regardless of ongoing global developments. 
Second, China and ASEAN are committed to assisting each other and consistently strengthening practical cooperation in traditional and non-traditional security fields, including when facing challenges like COVID-19. Third, both parties are committed to mutually beneficial cooperation, including keeping the markets open to each other. Li Qiang mentioned that the two-way trade volume between China and ASEAN last year reached more than 170 billion US dollars, a double increase compared with a decade ago. Fourth, China and ASEAN have promoted new cooperation in addressing climate change, environmental protection, energy transition and poverty alleviation through the ASEAN-China Sustainability Development Cooperation, which has been carried out over the last two years. The meeting as ASEAN observer, and I look forward. Right, we are still in conversations with researcher for, from CSIS, Mas Andrew Mantong. Mas Andrew, let's go on ahead. We uh, have it's time constraints. We have only like less than 10 minutes probably for the conversations. But we'd like to get your takes on the current relations of uh, ASEAN and China. Because, of course, on the table, things are sweet and delicious. It's all mm -hmm. candies in the sky. But that's not the real story here. That's another big elephant in the room. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned before, you know, one of the biggest challenges for the Indonesian government to halt this summit yeah. is incidents that uh, some ASEAN member states... Uh, uh, ha is having with uh, China with, in, in, with regards to South China Sea issues. One of the biggest uh, achievements that uh, this particular summit has achieved and also Indonesian government to finally uh, sort of uh, use the term of Indo-Pacific for approaching cooperation with China. Mm. So therefore there are no opposition anymore that mm. uh, ASEAN on and use the terms of Indo-Pacific. Because for China, initially, they always say that Indo-Pacific is the US term. And it's loaded with sort of Cold War mentality and so on and so forth. Yeah. But ASEAN managed to convince China that no, this is all about cooperation. Mm. So that's why I think that's important for approaching uh, 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 China-ASEAN relations. But uh, it doesn't really uh, uh, answer the, the, the unresolved question. On, that's why I think it, the the word, what mutual trust, mutual mutually beneficial mutually cooperation, beneficial. as well yeah. as mutual trust, sincerity. It's, yeah, that's <laughs> it's important because yeah. I think from that word, candies in the sky, yeah, 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 yeah. sweet delicious things. <laughs> <laughs> from from that words, I think there are some sort of hesitation mm. from both sides. A little bit of passive-aggressive relations, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually. <laughs> like, mm. honest and so on and so forth. Mm. You know, you can be honest in things that is not serious to your business, right? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so that's the way how to phrase and how to frame the cooperation. It doesn't also mean that China could be pushed aside because for ASEAN, China is instrumental for epicenter of growth. Of course. It's, uh, mm. it's a non-question but we should have a uh, good cooperation with China. And with that particular language, I think ASEAN also sending messages mm. to China, not only to China, but to the US. You should also, between you two, <laughs> between these two particular mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. say something wholeheartedly more sincere in mm. talking to each other. Because I think many of ASEAN member states has have been increasingly worried that f from the fact that channels of communication between the U.S. and China is somewhat blocked. Mm. So we don't want that. And I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Indonesian government is also uh, proposing some sort of initiative to be the mediator if it's necessary, mm. to be the sort of middle man as long as their channel of communication open. So this is the sort of uh, spirit that the Indonesian government uh, can do. But the problem is, can we use ASEAN for that? Mm. Mm. Or should Indonesia go it alone mm. to this? And I think, I don't know, it, de it really depends on the bilateral meetings between President Jokowi and, the, and China and President Jokowi and US and whether Indonesia is bold enough to go beyond ASEAN mm. for these matters. Because I think for ASEAN, there have been challenges in the past mm. that, for example, the decision to, uh, to do the military uh, joint naval exercise in South China Sea, 
is blocked by Cambodia and we know that Cambodia is close to China. Yes. In the past, when the incidents happened between Vietnam and, uh, and, and, uh, and Philippines uh, with China in South China Sea, mm. Cambodia also blocked the discussion, the discussion mm. back uh, one decade ago. So we didn't have joint communique at the end of the summit. So we don't want this to happen. So this is also, I think, the most important uh, key takeaways that uh, for, for ASEAN. Mm. For scholars and for uh, experts, Sometimes your expectation for ASEAN is too high. Hmm. ASEAN is not designed that, uh, that, that much to deal with this particular problem. So manage your expectations. But at the end of the day, for the Indonesian government, the final reflection question for, for them is when, when, it, when, when it comes to their relationship with China, when it comes to their relationship with the US, for example, have we done enough and is ASEAN instrumental enough for our purpose? If hmm. the answer is no, if we face more of a frustration by the delivering, by the sort of ideas that we try to push in this summit. Probably it's because Indonesian government is not creative enough, but probably it's because we cannot even manage ASEAN anymore. So go beyond ASEAN. Hmm. Find most important channels to work be, uh, behind or even around ASEAN. Like for example, to keep channel of communication open between US and China, just go it alone. Just go directly to Washington, go directly to Beijing, or probably deal with the so-called middle power in the region, work with Australia, work with Malaysia, work with Singapore, yes. and work with Japan and South Korea to keep mm. the sort of epicentrum of growth spirit open mm. in, 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 in the region. So yeah. ASEAN cannot be the only cornerstone of Indonesian foreign policy. And I think by the end of the, by the, end of the summit, the Indonesian government should have a tempered view on how are we going to treat ASEAN. It doesn't mean that ASEAN does not mm. really matter. I agree. Yep. Now, Mr. Andrew, now that the ASEAN summit is ending, uh, what's your take overall, just to sum up the whole summit? What have we achieved from the summit? Has it been successful? Indonesia has become a good chair. Mm. Indonesia has proved that we, it's only us in ASEAN that can push the strategic planning issues, Concord 4th, 2045, you know, uh, making sure that Myanmar is not going to be the chair, yeah. invoking Troika. Mm. It's only Indonesia that yeah. can do that. At ASEAN the headquarters in Jakarta. ASEAN headquarters <laughs> in Jakarta. Yeah. Mm. Some declaration, some breakthrough, it proves that we are good chair at the end of the day. But are we a good leader or not? Mm. It depends on the answer. Whether this particular result of the summit would make impact on how can be different ASEAN work on daily basis. Mm. If it can make a huge impact, then Indonesia is a good leader. But the next question is, is Indonesia a true power in, in Asia Pacific? That's also another question. Mm. If we fail to lead ASEAN, just be middle power. And, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, does, uh, the, not everything should go to ASEAN. As, for example, uh, one of the in Indonesian diplomats says, not everything has, uh, has to go through consensus in ASEAN. Mm. Also the same for Indonesia, not everything should be put in ASEAN. And I think by the end of the summit, it's getting more clear about what ASEAN can do and how it can benefit Indonesia and what ASEAN cannot do and how Indonesia should work on that. Fair enough. Right. Fair enough. That is such a nice wrap up That's of right. the whole 43rd ASEAN summit that has been going on. Very and well said. The that. key word right there <laughs> is impact. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, we'd like to uh, express our gratitude. We have to leave a conversation there. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Mas Andrew, for providing us more insights on the summit that we've been having the past couple of days in Jakarta. Uh, researcher of CSIS, and that is the uh, Center for Strategic and International Studies here in Jakarta. Uh, Mr. Andrew Mantong, thank, thank you, you so thank much you very for much having me. for the thank conversation. Mm -hmm. And that also concludes today's editions of the Journal of the 43rd ASEAN Summit and its related summits here in Jakarta. And just to cap the day, finally, I'm Rahmat Idris. And I'm Luisa Kusnandar. Thank you for watching TVRI World and we'll see you again next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.